Hello and welcome to my fourth video on string algorithms. Today we'll be going over a topic called tandem repeats. We define tandem repeats as follows. A string w is a tandem repeat if a pattern is repeated and the repetition are directly adjacent to each other. We also define a tandem repeat alpha alpha as primitive if and only if alpha is primitive, which I will get into in a little while. A string w equal to a to the power of k, for k equal to 3, 4 and so on, is called a tandem array, but not in every general case. A tandem repeat and tandem array is what we call a string property. In example, a string can be a tandem repeat. So how difficult is it to decide if a string s of length n is a tandem repeat? First, we'll take a look on periodic and primitive strings. Any string S1 up to n can be written in its normal form. Let P equals n minus beta, then S equals W to the power of n divided by P is W to the power of n divided by P rounded down W prime, where W prime is the string S from 1 to n minus n divided by p rounded down times p. This might be a little cryptic. So we'll just say that the normal form of s1 up to n is w n divided by p star, where p star is the minimum period. If a string s1 up to n is not periodic, in example p star is n, then it is primitive. So to define occurrences of tandem repeats in our string s, a tandem repeat alpha alpha is an s if it occurs one or more time in s. Note that an occurrence can be encoded in constant space as i length of alpha 2. Our computational problems are first to find all occurrences of tandem repeats in the string. Second is to find all primitive tandem repeats in s. In this simple example, the string of six A's have these three tandem repeats. Five occurrences of AA, three of AAAA, and only one occurrence of AAAAAA. In general, we can say the string A to the power of n contains n squared divided by four occurrences of n half tandem repeat. But there will only be one primitive tandem repeat, AA. Equivalently, one maximal repetition, 1, 1, n, which we also call a primitive tandem array. So, in our observation, we have seen that there can be no more than order n squared occurrences tandem repeats in the string S. But how many are, in example, given primitive? We'll start out by going into what is called Fibonacci strings, Fn, which is defined recursively as F0 being B and F1 being A. And Fn is then the concatenation of Fn minus 1 and Fn minus 2. The length of Fn is the nth Fibonacci number, where F0 and F1 is 1 and Fn is Fn minus 1 added on to Fn minus 2. Fibonacci strings are highly repetitive, but how high is that? Well, we have a theorem stating a Fibonacci string of length n contains at least n log n occurrences of primitive 10 repeats. Well, actually, this is 0.7962 fn log fn plus order of fn occurrences of primitive 10 repeats, which was shown by Frankel and Simpson in 1999. Kruschmoll's algorithm find all occurrences of primitive tandem repeats in the string from 1 to n in time order n log n. So no string of length n contains more than order n log n occurrences of primitive tandem repeats. We have already mentioned Kruschmoll, which in 1981 showed how to find the occurrences in time order n log n and space linear. Two years later, Apostolico and Preparata made another approach which was based on the use of suffix trees and had the same running time. 
In 1984, Main and Lorenz showed how to find all occurrences of tandem repeats in time order n log n plus the length of the output and using linear space. Stoy and Gosfield showed in 1998 how to find occurrences of tandem repeats in the same time. This algorithm can also be adapted to find all occurrences of primitive tandem repeats in order n log n. All this is suffix tree based. Now let's look some more at our tandem repeats. A branching occurrence of the tandem repeat in S is where the next letter of our tandem repeat is different from our first character in our repetition. A lemma says that any non-branching occurrence I, L, 2 of a tandem repeat is the left rotation of another tandem repeat I plus 1, L, 2, starting one position to its right. The next lemma we can use is where we consider two positions i and j of s, where 1 less than or equal to i less than j less than or equal to n. We let l be equal to j minus i. Then the following assertions are equivalent. a. i l2 is an occurrence of a tandem repeat, and b. i and j occur in the same leaf list of some node v in t of s with depth d of v larger than or equal to l. So let's look at an example. The tandem repeat aab aab with label 332. The non-branching tandem repeat has the label 232. Now let's get started with the basic algorithm. So the basic idea about this is that for each node v of tfs, Find the position i in leaf list of v, where alpha alpha is in l of v l of v, of course as a branching tandem repeat i depth of v2. So the algorithm is as follows. All nodes of t of s begin unmarked. 1. Select an unmarked internal node v. Mark v and execute steps 2a and 2b for node v. Step 1 is repeated until all nodes are marked. So 2a is to collect the leaf list LL of V. 2b we for each leaf i in LL of V test whether the leaf j equal to i plus d of V is in LL of V. If so, test whether s i is different from s i plus 2 times the depth of our node V. We know now that we have a branching tandem repeat of length 2d of v starting at position i if and only if both test returns true. So what does this test actually tell us? It tells us that i and j are in leaf list of distinct children of node v. In example, they are not in the same leaf list for any node with depth larger than depth of v. Complexity analysis shows the running time is order n squared and linear space if we can test in time constant time. To do this, we make a depth first numbering of all the leaves in TFS and corresponding lookup table. Now we can do test by an example looking in our string at node 8, which has the depth 1. We look up index 9 and get 10. But 8, 9 is not branching. And then we go on. So the running time we spend at each node is order length of leaf list of node v. So we need to speed up this basic algorithm. If we recall our lemma, we know that i and j must be in leaf list of different children of v. So for node v, we let v prime be the child of v with the largest leaf list. So large of v is the leaf list of v prime, and small is ll prime of v, which is ll of v minus ll of v prime. We observe here that there is no branching occurrence i d of v two, while i and j, which is i plus d of v, both in large of v. So in example, either i or i plus d of v are in small of v. So the idea is, 
for every i in small of v we port i depth of v two as branching if and only if i plus d of v is in the leaf list of v and si is different from si plus two depth of v also i minus d of v d of v two as branching if and only if i minus d of v in leaf list of v prime and si minus d of v is different from i plus d of v. The first part will find all branching occurrences of l of v l of v at positions in small of v. The second part will find all branching occurrences of l of v l of v at positions in large of v. So we add a new step called 2c where we do the same test for each leaf j in ll prime of v and i is j minus d of v. The test is if i is an ll of v prime so to test large of v and if si is different from s of i plus 2 d of v. The running time is bounded by the size of small of v and the space is still linear. To show how large this is we use what is called the small half trick. So we show that the sum of the length of all small of v is order n log n. Using order size of small of v we imply time order n log n in total. The proof for this is to count how many times each leaf can be in small of v for any leaf. So if leaf l is in small v, then the size of t of u is less than or equal to the length of t of v half. Otherwise, t of v prime wouldn't be large. So in example, leaf l can be in small v at most log n times along the path from l to the root. So our analysis gives us a running time of order n log n. Just to put this all together, we start at each occurrence of a branching tandem repeat and do a series of consecutive left rotations to find all occurrences of tandem repeats. The time analysis will give us a bound of order n log n plus length of the output. The algorithm can be extended to find all occurrences of primitive tandem repeats in time order n log n. Thank you for watching this video about tandem repeats. For my next video, I will be discussing suffix arrays. If you have any questions about this video or suggestion for future material, please go write a comment or send me an email which will be posted in the video description below.